On this most solemn Good Friday night, I welcome you to the Episcopal Church of the Redeemer and invite you to turn to your bulletin or to your Book of Common Prayer and join us as we focus on the passion of our Lord Jesus and all the blessings that accrued from it. Amen. Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross. He now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance, beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which he had not been told, them they shall see, and that which they had not heard, that they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up beyond, before him like a young plant, and took and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him of no account. Surely he was born in our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities upon him, was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth, but a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, though he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet. It was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous and shall bear their iniquity. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, 
and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and for the words of my distress? Oh, oh my God, I cry out to you day to night, but, but you do not answer. By night as well, well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our, Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted it, and you delivered them. They cried out to you, and were delivered. They trusted in you, and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm, and no man, scorned by all the despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, Strong bulls of the shining surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joy. My heart and my breast have smelt out My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of people do who circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not, Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten and help on me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save, Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you who have Jacob's mind, give the glory. A reading from the letter of Hebrews. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron into a place where there was a valley, a garden, where he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus replied. I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, Jesus asked them, Who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck at the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer and the Jewish police, arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus in, into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You're not one of this man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I've always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent Jesus bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. Those who were standing near the fire asked him, You're not also one of Jesus' disciples, are you? Peter denied it and said, I'm not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you in the garden with Jesus? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, 
Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated what kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I'm a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After Pilate had said this, he went out again to the Jews and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release somebody to you for the Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, king of the Jews, and striking him on his face. Pilate went out again and said to the Jews, Look, I am bringing him out here to you to let you know I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw Jesus, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law. And according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release Jesus. The Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everybody who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at the place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon, and Pilate said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, 
We have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. Please stand. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, but because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it. See who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus was his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clovis, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that day, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a, great, a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so you may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows he tells the truth. These things occurred, so the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look upon the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fears of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial customs of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, 
And in the garden there was a new tomb in whom no one had ever been laid. So, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. That's hard to listen to. I don't know what you do when you see something awful and graphic. I don't want to watch. I don't want to look. When there's a bad accident out on the interstate, I don't want to look. Yet I find my eyes are pinned to the burning car or the mangled wreck. And when there's a terrible video that goes viral, I don't want to watch. Just reading about it is bad. Think of the videos of George Floyd or Ahmaud Aubrey, or the terrible video of the poor Jordanian pilot being burned alive by the Syrians and of ISIS. But here, it is not simply the terrible suffering of a single man. It is all the evil of the world through history placed on one man's shoulders. This is what we do to God when we have the chance. And we do one look away. If it's something terrible, whether accident or video, we may say, what can I do? And usually the answer seems to be nothing. I think it's the wrong question. Sometimes the right question is, what have I done? Or not done? And maybe I did nothing wrong for the wreck on the interstate. I'm less certain about my failing to understand or engage about how race still works in America, or maybe how America works in the world, sometimes perhaps not even meaning to. But when it comes to Jesus, I know what I've done. Me, and you, and the rest of human unkind. I know, but I don't want to look. I don't want to think about it. If I start thinking, I might have to answer. If we do look, we need not to transfix ourselves with guilt, but acknowledge what is true. Pilate, God help him, waved his hand and dismissed truth with a question, what is truth? The true God and true man were standing in front of him. Maybe Pilate on the day of his death, if not before, had to confront what he had done. He could no longer wave away his part in the death of the Christ. You and I, we're given grace before our death to look at this death, to ask for grace, grace from this dying man to truly change. We need to see Jesus' eyes. We need to learn to long to hear his voice. We need his life in our lives, or we die slowly and without hope. 
but with his life in us. We can even gaze on death unafraid. And more, we can look at those sins and awful life patterns that we have used to cut ourselves off from love and health from our families and from the truth. This is the time to stop and look and consider how Jesus' death changes everything. Now, everything means how we relate to God. Now we can. Everything means how we relate to other human beings. Now Jesus has related to all of them. Everything means our capacity to change, including to help change the world towards his kingdom. So old sins don't take terrible new forms and continue to destroy us and other men and women. Our lives are interconnected. Everything is. Because Jesus' death touches every life, mine, yours, the best, and the worst. He died for everyone. We can no longer say, that doesn't affect me. There's nothing I can do about that. If only we can, in fact, pray about a situation which is something, something with power that we can do. But there's usually something further we can do if we consider whatever is evil, we need to stop and look at the truth and look into Jesus' eyes, look up there and listen to his voice and determine as best we may what would please him. Don't think there's nothing I can do. The power that is in him since he took to the cross and through the cross came into your life, with that power, you will come up with something, something that you can do. Tonight we look and are silent and heartbroken. We wonder at love that went to and through the doors of death for us. But the day after tomorrow is another day. And this day and that day have changed the world. Let's reshuffle our questions and move from what can I do to what have I done and then to with Christ's help. What can we do? Amen.
sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, that all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death, and become heirs with him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity in witness and service, for bishops and other ministers and the people they serve, for churches in Egypt and the Middle East and China, for George, our bishop, and the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, for those about to be baptized, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth, and for those in the public room. For Joseph, the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, for Greg, our governor, and the legislatures of Texas, for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or mind, for the hungry and the homeless, for the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the wounded, the crippled, those sick with COVID, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives, and those in mortal danger. That Christ in his mercy will comfort and relieve them, and grant them the knowledge of his love, and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength all who suffer. Let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions, and give us, we pray, the strength to serve to them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ. For those who have never heard the word of salvation. For those who have lost their faith. For those hardened by sin or indifference. For the contemptuous and scornful. For those who are enemies 
kingdom and faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resisted and bring home to your flock those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to our God and pray for the grace of a holy life. That with all who have departed this world and have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. O God of unchangeable power and eternal life, look favorably on your whole church. That wonderful and sacred mystery, by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole earth see and know that things which have been cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls now in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church, peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever.